Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making some festive, delicious Grinch cookies. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350, line two baking sheets with parchment paper, and now in a big bowl, I'm adding two and a half cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour. These cookies have no chill time. They are super easy. Now I want two cups of powdered sugar, that's 240 grams. Think of these cookies as vanilla crinkle cookies with like a beautiful holiday decoration scheme that looks really cute on your cookie platters. To leaven things up, I want one tablespoon of baking powder. And add that right in. And I'm adding some contrast with half a teaspoon of salt. And I would use like a sea salt if you can. Mellow salt flavor, not like iodized. Our scale is done for now. Grab a whisk. And we're just gonna whisk this up. <laughs> okay, so. I have a plan. It involves one extra bowl though, but for now, I'm gonna add half a cup of butter. It is softened and unsalted. If you wanted to use salted butter, just add in a quarter teaspoon of salt. You'll be fine. It's like you're making pastry dough, except everything is soft. We wanna work this in really easily without overmixing the dough. So having these in pieces will help that. Technically, you could just add the eggs and everything else into this bowl. I want to have this perfectly dyed green with no streaks and no overmixing. So I'm going to crack my eggs into a separate bowl, which is also good for shell patrol. We want some green food coloring because this is a Grinch cookie. Give that a whisk. Green eggs and ham. Is everybody thinking this? I would not want to have that for breakfast. No, 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 no. To sweeten the deal, one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Nope. Give that a final mix. Add this delicious green concoction of eggs right into your dough. Whenever you're dyeing something, always try to get the correct color in the wet mixture or at least before the flour is added. Because if you're adding and remixing once the flour is there, oh my gosh, it is a recipe for disaster. Trust and believe. On low, we're gonna mix this until it is almost combined. I'll finish it off with a spatula. Okay, increase speed to medium, and we're just gonna mix this until it is almost combined. It needs to be at a higher speed so that butter gets mixed in. That was fast. This whole cookie is like the quickest thing ever. I'm gonna clean my beaters off. That's how you do it, look. Fold together any of the unmixed flour you see. This is a nice Grinchy color. <laughs> By the way, if you didn't wanna use food coloring, you could have totally used like a teaspoon or two of matcha powder, but then you'd have a matcha flavored uh, vanilla cookie, which I think is delicious, but it does give you an extra flavor. But it also lets you avoid using any food coloring. Mm. Okay. It smells so good. Set this aside for a moment. Grab a small bowl. We're gonna roll these cookies just like you would a crinkle cookie, except there is some cornstarch here, and the cornstarch is making magic happen. In a small-ish bowl, you're gonna have half a cup of cornstarch, that's 56 grams. Just the thought of touching cornstarch. I like some powder got on my hands. Oh my God. It's like shivers down my spine. I don't like it at all. Okay. Half a cup of powdered sugar, 60 grams. There actually is cornstarch mixed into powdered sugar quite often because it helps it stay nice and powdery and fluffy and avoid clumping. Cornstarch really helps cookie set. If you've ever made my sugar cookie recipe, laser lines, no spreading because there's some cornstarch in there. It gives you a tender crumb, they just don't spread. The cornstarch that we're gonna wrap these cookies in with the powdered sugar is gonna help seal them in place. So even though we're not chilling this cookie, it'll still have that beautiful crinkle cookie look. Mm -hmm. Mix that up so it's nice and distributed. Now it's time for a little cookie assembly line. One and a half tablespoons of our cookie dough. Quick roll, hopefully in your cold hands. Plop that into your cornstarch mixture, but I'm not gonna touch that with my fingers. Not today. No, no, no. Give it a nice roll. 
and plop that onto your baking sheet, just like that. It's like 35 grams per ball if you're measuring it out, if you're like me, <laughs> can't help yourself. Plop that in, roll it around, and if you can get like a nice layer of the sugar and cornstarch on, your cookies will bake up and have more of that like crusty white shell to give you the contrast that we all love so much. Give them some room to spread and continue the process. A little sugar cornstarch on your fingers actually really helps the balls not stick to your hands. I love the idea of these cookies because, and I didn't invent them, They're, these are a thing. Um, you know, the Grinch is heart grew, so his chest expanded a little bit, and these are kind of like that. You have like the cold white exterior. We're gonna pop some hearts onto these, and it's like that moment at the end of the book where the Grinch is realizing the spirit of Christmas. He's growing a bit, and you see like the cookies are kind of showing that growth. That's what I think at least. Before these go into the oven, we're gonna press down slightly on these cookies just so they spread the way we want them to. A lot of times we're looking for really fun different cookies for our holiday platters. This makes a cookie platter complete. You get all the amazingness of a crinkle cookie, but it's unexpected and green and has those Grinchy vibes. You're gonna love it. Pop your cookies into the oven 12 minutes at 350 or until they're crinkling and the bottoms are just taking on some color. Then we add our final touch. Right out of the oven, grab some hearts. You can use heart candies, cinnamon candies, heart sprinkles, or skip this all together. And we're just gonna press those in. I actually like seeing the indentation of them pressed in because it looks like it's more a part of the cookie, if that makes sense. There we go. Just for fun, I gave the second batch five minutes in the freezer and it does help ever so slightly with spread. They have more of a dome shape, but really they're both the same. If you pop your cookies into the freezer, you have the risk of turtling or it has one center spot that's kind of frozen and then it doesn't crack which some people don't like, but they both taste delicious. Transfer your cookies to a wire rack to cool completely, and you can store these for up to a week in an airtight container. Hmm. Pillowy, soft, and melt in your mouth, a lovely vanilla flavor, an altogether amazing cookie, and they're the quickest cookies ever. This is gonna be a great cookie for your next holiday platter and I hope you get a chance to make this recipe. And if you like this video, check out my holiday cookie playlist.